As wireless network operators make their plans for 2021 and beyond, what are the key trends impacting their plans? Well, I'm talking today to Phil Sorsky. He is SVP for Service Provider Sales EMEA at Comscope about key trends in wireless networking. So Phil, what are the key trends that you're seeing just now in terms of mobile operator deployment strategies? Well, uh, in terms of the very short term, we've seen an impact from COVID, both in terms of access to sites, which has delayed rollouts, and also even spectrum auctions, which has also been delayed. So for 2020 itself, there was definitely a blip in terms of 5G rollout. However, what we've seen as we get, get well into Q4 is that those deployment plans have now been reignited. Spectrum auctions are, are closing out. And so for next year, we're seeing a massive ramp up in terms of deployment plans for operators to put appropriate 5G infrastructure in place, including antennas. And from an antenna perspective, I think when 5G was, uh, if you like, a theory on paper, there was an awful lot of interest in MIMO, in uh, uh, 32T, 32R, uh, 64T, 64R, using active antennas. And, and that's fine where there are dense, uh, you know, high traffic situations in the middle of city centers and so on. But I think what operators are coming to realize is that um, these, uh, these uh, uh, highly power consuming antennas are not necessarily appropriate in all environments given that they can consume between 600 watts and 1,000 watts per antenna, that's a really expensive asset to deploy on a ubiquitous basis. And so the trend we're seeing now is more of a mix and match and picking the right sites where 64T, 64R makes sense with a fully, fully active antenna drawing, maybe 1,000 watts, but blending that with more of a, an active passive approach where you can put, put passive antennas with effectively zero power consumption in those situations where it makes sense to do so, where perhaps the, uh, the, the benefit isn't, uh, isn't so great because the density isn't so great. The other trend that we're seeing, and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the new year, is the shift in traffic itself Pre-pandemic, obviously, the major hotspots were typically all the big city centres in, in, in Liverpool, Manchester, Glasgow, Paris, New York, etc. The epicentre of traffic was the epicentre of those cities. And what we're hearing now from the mobile operators is that although fixed broadband usage has, has gone through the roof as people work from home using uh, Zoom, WebEx, etc., mobile traffic has also shifted more into a suburban environment rather than a city center environment. And it'll be interesting to see the impact that has in terms of deployment of things like um, expensive power consuming active antennas versus the deployment of that mixed approach where I would predict that in the years ahead, we'll see much more of a blend of active passive in the suburbs where people will be working, maybe not five days a week as we get back to work, but certainly two or three days a week. And therefore the operators will have to blend their deployment to match that shift in traffic. Okay, excellent. Um, now, what kind of impact is the growing interest in Open RAN having on mobile operator strategies? Well, I think in the short term, and by that I'm talking the next you know, year, two years, maybe even three years, not a lot in terms of mass deployment, because uh, the, what we see is the operators don't want to risk implementing an Open RAN solution in a high profile scenario where they've got high value customers and if the network goes down, then, then obviously they'd, they'd have a lot of complaints on their hands. And what we're witnessing is more of a, um, a, a, a trials approach in, in areas where if, if an outage does occur, it wouldn't be so impactful. And we're also seeing uh, open round more being experimented with in a 4G context rather than a 5G context. Now, within that 4G context, you know, uh, Open RAN is really a, a, as much about software as it, as it is about hardware and disaggregation of that software, allowing operators to be more creative and get more control over the sub elements of software within that network and maybe you know, create new services within, within, within their own control. However, the, the same issues that apply to 2G, 3G, 4G apply in open RAN, whether it be 4G or 5G. And that's the ruggedization of these solutions because just having a very good um, disaggregated open RAN bundle, if you like, uh, perfectly orchestrated and brought together by whichever third party you decided to you know, bring in and pull the whole thing together, you still have to cope with the physical elements outside, snow, rain, sunshine, cold temperatures, high temperatures, and so on. So no matter what happens within the open RAN space, there will still be this physical aspect to wireless networks, which will require uh, physical solutions to get around those variations in, in temperature and, and uh, water ingress uh, uh, and so on. And so what we're seeing now is as that open round market starts to mature, 
people are still talking to us about how physically do we deploy this as well as all of the appropriate software and server platforms and, and, and so on. Okay, excellent. Now that's something that's obviously uh, coming uh, down the pipe uh, in the future for mobile operators. Well, what should they be thinking about right now in terms of their plans for 2021? Well, I think you know, 2021 is a pretty short horizon. And I go back to this, this uh, idea of blending passive and, and active. Um, it's really important for operators to not increase the real estate they're using either on the tower or on the rooftop or wherever they happen to have deployed their legacy uh, antenna footprint, because it'll, it'll cost them more in terms of rent, it'll cost them more in terms of landlord fees, it'll cost them more in delays because of planning permissions for, for a new footprint and so on. So I think the area they really need to pay attention to is trying to shadow physically what they had in their 4G or 3G deployment and replicating that with their 5G offering. And that typically needs to be a blend of active and passive together, whereby within the same shadow, if you like, on, on, on that rooftop or on that tower, you have the same, what appears to be the same physical footprint, but is in fact a blend of active antenna and passive antenna, allowing you to effectively you know, uh, uh, get the best of both worlds, if you like, and not increase your operations costs from a, uh, a, a rental point of view and a, a slowing down in terms of that speed of deployment point of view. So I, I would say it's, it's this shift that they need to focus on from, uh, if you like, the, um, the shininess of active antennas only, which uh, on, on paper are, are very attractive, to a more pragmatic approach, a, a, real, a real world deployment approach through 2021, and uh, making sure they blend the active and the passive where it makes sense in urban settings, suburban settings, rural settings, and, uh, and so on. Okay, excellent. Um, so what are the main focus areas of R&D innovation at Comscope uh, and how does that marry up with operator strategies? Well, I think uh, it's twofold. We're, we're extremely active on the outdoor wireless side, particularly in the antenna space. And we're also active on the indoor coverage side, which traditionally for us was uh, stadiums, airports, stations and so on, but is increasingly in industrial settings and in hospitals and more, if you like, private, private LTE, private 5G settings. But firstly, on, on the outdoor side, um, no matter what happens with Open RAN and whoever, uh, if you like, wins the race for the best software, the best orchestration, the, the, the best overall uh, packaging of the Open RAN platform, there is still a need for these physical goods and particularly uh, antennas and the cabling and the connectors that connect those antennas into the, the active system, if you like. And we've done an awful lot of work in that space, most recently uh, with Nokia in terms of combining active antennas and passive antennas. But that work goes on both with the established OEMs, the, 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 the names that we'd normally associate with RAD infrastructure, but also the new startups. The, the, these guys are typically focused on the active software intelligence side of, of, of the new alternative RAN, if you like. And we're still focused very much on that physical uh, uh, aspect of the antenna and the physics of the antenna and how that will work with uh, with whichever open RAM platform somebody might deploy. Now today that still tends to be more on a proprietary basis because of the legacy we've come from, that proprietary type of, uh, of legacy over the years. But increasingly uh, what we're now working on is more of an open standard whereby you know literally any antenna, any connector will be able to connect to anybody's open RAM platform and help play into that promise of open RAM where it's uh, you know any any module with an open RAM will connect to a, another module, whether it be at a software layer or a physical layer, and and, and hence uh, you know we'd see ourselves as a, a Switzerland, if you like, of that arms race, playing a neutral race and being able to provide to to all parties. And then likewise on the indoor side, we're, we're more involved with the active side of indoor uh, as well as the passive side. We have some comprehensive solutions historically in, in 3G and 4G for, for DAS indoor coverage. And what we're seeing now is a, a very strong appetite for experimentation with private uh, LTE and private 5G within certain industrial settings such as um, uh, factory automation and so on. And so in that context, we're not just innovating from a passive antenna point of view, but also from the, the entire system, the entire suite that might be deployed within, let's say, a manufacturing campus. Okay, great. Well, lots of really important developments ongoing there. Phil, thanks for talking with us today. It's a pleasure, Ray.